Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. We're all friends, we're here to have fun, but our story can include graphic violence, drug use, sexual content, and other mature themes. Content warnings can be found in the show notes. We've talked at our table about safety, comfort, and consent, both as players and storytellers. We know what to expect. We're all excited to be here, and we want you to feel the same. So listener discretion is advised. Now, let's walk the path of night. Last time on Path of Night. Marcus Vitel confronted the Coterie when they failed to make it through his ward. The La Samba ran, and the Coterie gave chase, accidentally proving Marcus Vitel to be a powerful Methuselah. Vitel took Britta and Miles out of the fight swiftly, torporing them. Renwick joined the fight alongside Neil, Wynn, and Johnny. Vitel struck Renwick down, giving the Nosferatu final death. The rest of the Coterie escaped, as Vitel burned the neighborhood to the ground. The group of you had a plan. Not everything worked as intended. But you knew where to fall back to in case things didn't. One by one. Those who have weathered the storm and remain standing find themselves the York Garage on the second floor. The parking garage is dead quiet. The lights really only intermittently light the garage itself, so there's deep shadows, and you can't help but wonder what might be hidden there as you go from light to light until when Johnny and Neil are together with their torpid allies. Neil arrives carrying Britta in his arms, looking around frantically, having sort of lost track. He saw Johnny run off, disappeared to get Britta out before he saw that Wynn was completely safe, and he's just looking around frantically at the rally point hoping somebody else is there with him looking almost shell-shocked and panicked but like his mind's going a million miles an hour trying to figure out how to salvage this complete mess of a situation uh, johnny when are you are you guys please tell me you're here johnny arrived into the parking garage in the suv that we had taken um after leaping out of the situation he managed to get back to that, stow Miles' body, and drive to the garage. But upon getting out of the driver's seat, you can see that he is in a bad way. He gives you hungry animal eyes. How much blood do you have? There's a look of, at first, just utter relief seeing Johnny here, and then sort of panic and, and a little... Uh, 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 I have. He grabs you by the shoulder and, I, and, and puts you against this SUV in a way that you can tell that he is restraining himself, but it is it feels uncomfortable to be pinned by Johnny with that look in his eyes. I, I have. How much blood? Some. Are you. Enough? En enough? He grabs your wrist and bites into your wrist and slakes his thirst. He will take three points of blood. Neil, you do not suffer from the kiss. Are you resisting in any way? Neil will try and pull away just because he doesn't want to bond Johnny. Like, it's less that he's concerned that Johnny might not stop in this moment. Like, he's too overwhelmed with fear to be afraid that Johnny's going to just fully eat him. Like, situational fear. But he's so focused on not wanting to bond Johnny that he does try and, like, pull his arm and say, Johnny, wait, there's got to be enough. But, I mean... In a grapple with Johnny, there's there's no resisting that. Probably about the time that Neil is able to push Johnny away. There's kind of like a little bit of a clanging noise as Wynne comes up the stairwell, but it looks more like she's not using the stairs. She's standing on the little concrete ledge next to the stairs, grabbing the bar 
uh, the next floor up and pulling herself up until she gets there. And she'll kind of vault over the stairwell ledge and make her way over and do a little bit of a startle to see Neil pressed against the car by Johnny. And Johnny evidently drinking from Neil. I'm going to make a self-control check to stop drinking. I think considering the circumstances and where Johnny's humanity is at and how hungry he was, I think it's a legitimate issue. That seems fair to me. Are there any modifiers to this, Lex? Yes, your maximum dice pool is your blood pool, whichever is the lower between your self-control and blood. You've still got uh, three. Actually, that's a good sort of mechanical question before you roll. It's still that night, but we have gotten away from Vital. So do we still have the extra willpower? Any calling down the Hunter's Moon that has been used with regards to that plan mm. is done. So no more. Gotcha. I went through so much willpower. Oh, in yeah. That fight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Three successes. You can feel Johnny grip your wrist. And his bite relaxes, but he is still hovering over. And he looks you in the eyes with kind of an apologetic look. Thank you, Neil. I, I thank you for stopping, I, Johnny. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't. I should have said no more. I should. Jo- no, 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 no. We we do not have time for apologies on either part. We are doing. We are in crisis mode now, guys. Right? This, apologies come later. This is bad. This is really, really bad. Johnny, thank nods. you. Thank Johnny, you. Johnny nods along with Wynn and lets Neil go and cleans his mouth off. Wynn kind of, she doesn't close distance because she is also hungry and she is not going to get close enough to tempt herself into this. To that point, when Johnny pulls away from Neil, Neil also looks hungry now. Oh, fuck, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick check in. How much blood does everyone have? One. <laughs> uh, after Johnny pulls away, Neil has three. Okay, so we're, we're evens. We're evensies now. Yeah, <laughs> we basically split my blood between the two of us. Wynn has one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Wynn is not getting close. And if someone upsets you, you're rolling one die to resist frenzy. Mm-hmm. All right. You guys, I'm real hungry, so we need to... We I, I This is not the bunch to be saying this too, but we have got to be calm and rational about how talking about how we're going forward. Agreed. Um, yeah. Um, so what is what is the first thing we need to do to get control of this? We need to get you something to eat. That's the second thing we need to do. We need to get balls rolling. How, how no, do we... when this is balls rolling, because we, we are a, a, a series of, of dominoes on a, on a seesaw right now. Neil, and... Neil, please don't think about me right now. That's, I can't do that. I Think about Miles then. Think about Britta. I'm, I'm looking at the bigger picture. You need to eat or things are going to get worse. Neil, do not push me. Okay. We need to get somewhere where we can make sure that they're safe and that there's a source of food. So the Haven, Miles' Haven, can we get back there? Can you make it back there? I shouldn't be in the car with you guys, but yeah, I can get there. Um, Back there, Miles has his herd, his ghouls, the, the people who could at least help us. And it's somewhere safe, safer for Miles and Britta until we could figure out how to get them up getting them up um th- there's options there's people to talk to but uh, are there options at the haven as much as there are standing right here okay I, when I, the problem is some of the options we have to talk about who we're going to talk to because the prince of the city is down right now when? i i have ideas on how to fix that okay we don't need to talk about them here and now. I do think getting back to the Haven is a good choice because you guys look absolutely delicious and I don't even want to look at John at Miles and Britta right I'm now. Worried about that, yeah. Um, Wynn is like like she's she's it looks like she's got the DTs. She is just like bouncing and shivering and holding together only from the sheer amount of will that she has to put against this. There are 
a hundred things we need to do. But I think the first step is getting the two of them back to the Haven, and you need to eat something before I, you're near them. Yep. If you guys can get there ahead of me and arrange for something to be there for me before I come inside. That was my thought, yeah. exactly. Okay, then get them safe. I will run. I don't have enough left to turn into something faster. Don't worry about getting there fast. Worry about getting there safe. Well, we have a rampaging thaumaturge setting fire to everything, so there's going to be some haste involved. As long as it's safe. That's the plan. I'll, I'll get these guys safe back to the Haven, too, and we'll see you there soon. Yeah. He gives you a look. He doesn't reach out, but you can tell that he, like, wants to, like, touch you. He, like, wants to hug, but you can tell that he is in crisis mode and just goes straight for the driver's seat. Yeah, Wynn will put an arm up and thump a fist against her heart, like, love you guys, I would hug you, but now is not that time. Neil puts up both of his hands, like, in the little shape of a heart towards <laughs> Wynn, like, also clearly wanting to just be, like, giving comfort and receiving comfort in this yep. moment, knowing it's not possible right now. And without looking at either of them too long, she scurries back down. She seems to have some problems with the idea of being confined to a stairwell. So she just climbs over the edge and drops and lands on the next landing and drops again and goes. Johnny will start the vehicle and bang on the side of the door. Let's go, Neil. Neil sort of hoists Britta the strength that Johnny gave them earlier starting to fade and sort of struggles, puts her into the back seat, buckles her in, and then gets in the front seat next to Johnny. As you go to get into the front seat, lights all around you become overwhelmingly bright. You feel confused. And then your senses fade away entirely. As you are confronted with a vision. You see the Bronx, some of the worst neighborhoods you are aware of. And there, at a basketball court, that uh, has its fence kind of rusted out, mostly gone. There are no backboards anymore. The ground is cracked and ruined. Everything around you is dilapidated. And this time, unlike so many other visions where it is a series of flashes or sensations, you find yourself in a crowd. Weak, hungry, confused, and unsure of why you feel this terrible hunger stirring in you. And all around you, Dozens of people that are confused and scared. All of them victims of kidnappings, assaults, dragged there en masse, buried with people, and having to have killed and lost themselves to this madness in order to survive and dig themselves out. Each of you survivors of these terrifying ordeals. And in the center of the court, speaking to the group with this aura of command and hope, is a woman with a thick Spanish accent, a saber on her hip, a leather jacket, and beside her, her loyal packmates. And she tells all of you that you have been cursed. You have been taken by the machinations of a master vampire, and that he is responsible for your curse, and you will not be free of this vampirism until you kill the man responsible and end the curse. And she tells you about Miles Davenport, the one responsible for your suffering. And in you, there's this glimmer of hope. You don't really believe your apparent savior, but she's literally the only way out. And if you have to kill some stranger to save yourself and get back to your family, you're not proud, 
but you'll do it. And as you begin to feel inspired, the man who is standing beside her, you recognize fucking Delgado anywhere. He lets out a bestial roar that scares and invigorates you. And you can feel his potence surging through your veins and empowering you for a battle that is to come. And you shut the passenger door and are sitting next to Johnny. <sighs> oh, God. Oh, my God. Johnny, I... We gotta go. We gotta go now. You got a moment? It's starting. It's starting now. Vital, I, I, I don't know if he c called or what, but Carmen, all of them, there's an army of shovel heads. Your sire, he's rallying them the way you rallied us to go after Vital, and they're coming now. They're on their way. If not tonight, then tomorrow or the next. It started. Johnny blinks at that fumbles for his pack of Morley's, looks down to see that there's one left, puts it in his mouth. All right, let's go. And oh, lights God. up. They will take the SUV and head towards the Haven. Wind hops out of the parking garage. The air is cool, cold even, and the city is very much alive. You can hear the cars passing by. You can see an old man with a shopping cart kind of hustling by with coat and extra gloves on. If you choose to hunt, there is prey. Wynn is actively avoiding looking at the, the homeless population. A lot of them are veterans. Her dad was a veteran. She does not have the emotional space to deal with doing that. She'll kind of tuck her, hand, her arms tightly against herself as she walks, nominally to make it look like she's at least cold. But she is looking for drunks. She is looking for people stumbling out of bars or fumbling with their car keys trying to drive home drunk. I think subconsciously Wynn really needs a drink right now. Mm. But she is, she is keeping eyes peeled for convenience that won't, that won't cost her later. Roll me a perception plus alertness as you stalk the streets of New Haven. I'm still pretty good on willpower, so I'm going to spend one of those. Four successes. With four successes, you walk the streets headed towards the New Haven Green. It is a an unusual pattern of sidewalks that cross it, forming what can only be some sort of occult symbol. But tonight... It is mostly populated by people attempting to warm their hands by trash fires. Or, in one particular case, a young, horny couple desperately in search of a place that's out of sight so that they could better enjoy one another's company. There's two of them, which always represents some manner of risk, but they're actively trying to get be alone. So because Wynn is who she is without apology or regret, and with one dot of streetwise, does she know of a good fucking spot in New Haven? Unfortunately, because Wynn doesn't necessarily worry about such things, <laughs> I'm not going to allow you to simply know. Okay, that's fair. Do you want me to roll? <laughs> Yeah, why don't you start scouting out potential spots that are out of sight. So streetwise and... I'm going to say perception. Okay. Two successes. <laughs> so it looks like there's a handful of bars. Some of them have little driveways that lead to spaces behind the actual bar itself. There are apartments overhead. It's all kind of a tight, tight space. They could probably make their way down one of those alleys and get carried away. It'd probably smell, but they're young, they're drunk, they're dumb, they, they don't care. Shit. So Wynn, without an ounce of shame, will walk up to the couple and kind of like put her head down next to theirs. I can show you a better spot for this if you'd like. 
I need to know your humanity rating. <laughs> 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 oh boy! <laughs> Are you, right? Are you fucking guys? I'm sorry, <laughs> kids want to see a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I have forgotten until this moment that. Win is humanity five, but that's not the part I forgot. The part I forgot is that she has eerie fucking presence. Yep. <laughs> and she is. How does that manifest? And and, oh and describe your beast features. She just has a very predatory way about her in the way that she moves. She is watching things a little too long, a little too intensely, and like she always moves like she's moving with intent. So she's also got them uh, viper fangs. She's got the snake patterns on the sides of her head. Uh, and the, the eyes that are just an unnatural, almost eagle-like color. Her nails are just probably really long and nasty and, like, uncomfortably thick. They were just inside Marcus Vital for a minute there, too. There's got to be dirt and blood Oh, in there's them. definitely, on the one hand, there's definitely, like, ash and probably, like, burnt calluses <laughs> all down her fingertips. And humanity. Five. Well, these things, coupled with the fact that you smell like a burnt house, <laughs> causes them to be very visibly startled. You have a moment to say one thing and attempt to calm them. What is that thing that you say? That's a really good question. So Wynne realizes pretty quick that this is not going to go very well. <laughs> she has forgotten exactly how bad she is with the mortal populace. So she quick in her head tries to walk it back with, no, I just mean because your nipples are going to get really hard. Fuck. And she just quells both of them. You can choose to quell one. Which okay. one do you wish to quell? Let's quell the dude. What does quell look like? And which ability is that? Um, it's animalism. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing that I can do to give people a way out of frenzy, but it basically makes people compliant, I guess. Mm -hmm. Docile. Docile. Yeah, it subdues their fight or flight. And it's conveyed through touch? Or eye contact. Yep. Mm -hmm. So she just, they turn to look at her, she looks at them, boom, quell. Win will roll manipulation plus intimidation. Um, will I get my manipulation spec of threats? Yes. Okay. What's the difficulty? Six normally, but you have eerie presence and mm -hmm. therefore at a plus two difficulty. This I am being decadent and spending a willpower on. Five successes. With five successes, his eyes go wide like a doe in the headlights and he freezes it's like those tragedies with prey animals when confronted by a predator that no longer needs to chase them moments before they're consumed. And the that bit of hope of survival goes out of the prey animal's eyes. It leaves his in the same way. And then the girl that is with him shoves him towards you as a means of slowing you down should you be intent on chasing her. And she goes running, spooked by the creepy woman in the hood. That's good for her. <laughs> so Wynne just kind of lets that happen and just embraces being the creepy park stalker, breaking up Lover's Lane interludes, and just kind of leans into the guy's neck and sinks her teeth in. And she will... I can take two without causing him harm, right? If you take three, he's knocked out. If you take more than that, he needs medical attention. All right. Wynne will try to keep herself to three. Roll me self-control. Remember that your self-control is capped at your blood pool. One success. He does not die tonight. And despite like being at the buffet and her stomach still rumbling, metaphorically, Wynne puts the plate down and takes her fangs out of him, giving him a lick. And kind of slinks off. When you lick the wound, it closes. And he slowly slumps towards the ground. Curls up into this fetal position in the alley. And stays there. And when will wipe her mouth, adjust the hoodie. Check herself to make sure she's not overtly having committed an assault. 
and she starts walking for the haven. And you leave. The group of you arrive to the haven. The front door is unlocked. It's open. You slip right in. Awaiting for you are Miles' ghouls, who are gathered up around Eden. They have weapons drawn. And Miles, because he splurged for exceptional gear for his team, they're strapped with AK-47's body armor, the works. All that Eden has is this Glock, this pistol that she's holding in her hand, with a stern expression on her face. The ghouls have stern expressions on their faces. And as you enter, their eyes seem to stare daggers at Miles. And when it becomes clear that the group of you brought him here for safety to help this person, those daggers are pointed at each of you. Eden is sitting on a person that is lying on their side, propped against the wall. There is a stake in his chest, and you recognize him to be the Tremere that the group of you have held captive for some time now. There's a clicking noise as Eden lights a cigarette. You should not be smoking, young lady. Neil, who's that in her? Uh... So what, what's going on, everybody? Eden shrugs. I was actually thinking I might ask the group of you that. Who's Jan Peterson? Can we put the weapons down for a minute? Nope. We've got stakes, too. Why are you asking who Jan Peterson is? Answer the question. He's an archon of the Camarilla. Is it true that he's after me? There's a lot of people after you, babe. Don't call me babe. She's got like these tears welling up in her eyes, and she's clearly enraged. All of them seem enraged with Miles. Where are the ghouls' weapons pointed? Right now, they're just kind of holding them close to chest and haven't aimed them at anyone. So are they in a defensive ring around Eden? Yeah. Who's this guy? Uh, there is a Tremere by the name of Ira. I thought you said the Tremere are after me. That's why he's staked. That doesn't make any sense. Is he after me? The Tremere are after you. He is Tremere. He asked us to stake him so he couldn't hurt you. Why didn't Miles just kill him? We don't tend to jump to that solution if we don't have to. Bullshit. Name someone we've killed that we didn't have to. I can see how close you are to the beast. You're not nice vampires. Especially not him, she points at Miles. Eden, what's going on? When did you all start feeling this way? Is Miles a Diablerist? C- can we go question for question here? When did no, get- we can't. He is. Is Miles a nice vampire? I don't think any vampires are nice. Britta's the only nice one. When well, saying Britta's the only nice one visibly makes Neil look sad, but he does not seem to disagree. But Miles does have a good heart, and he is my friend. He's put a whole lot in the line to protect your neck. Well, he doesn't have to anymore. Why is that? We're leaving. Where are you going? None of your business. Well, like, if you want to get past me, it's going to be... Oh, that's where it's at now? No, okay, You're hold gonna on. You're going to keep me captured? Stop. Did I say S- that? Stop. Something changed. Something changed in the atmosphere here. What is it? When did you start feeling this way? I looked through Miles' things. I learned about his war. I learned that none of these people have any interest in me actually being alive, and that goes holds true for his allies. And I know, I know that he will do whatever it takes to keep himself safe. I am not safe here. I'm leaving. Eden, we haven't been safe for a long time, pretty much since you came into our lives. We've had to make a lot of choices to keep you alive. There are so many things pointed at us right now, and they would be so much easier if we gave you up, and we didn't. 
we made the choice that we would rather have the world against us than give you to them. I'm not safe until Miles is dead. Why do you think it has to be Miles? Because it has to be Miles. He's the one with all the connections. He's the one. He's the one behind everything. She Johnny tries not starts cry. laughing. You think Miles is the one behind everything? Good grief. Are you hungry? Because you're saying some dumbass shit. If you want to leave, you know what? You're old enough to do so. But before you do that, can I at least make you some pancakes or something? No. She frustrated she wipes tears from her eyes. Fucking let these ghouls sit and, and put their weapons down. If you want to leave, I'm not going to stop you. But at least come talk reasonable with us in the kitchen. One of the ghouls speaks up. Can't let that happen, Johnny. Sorry. What? You can't let me go to the kitchen? Miles kept us as slaves. We're going free. What's how long have you been ghouls? Big red flag having a uh, understanding the it is how the blood bond works. Yeah, anyways. why don't you give me an intelligence plus a cult roll? Yeah, that's I don't suppose my spec and sorcery would apply. Sure. Oh. What's the diff? Seven. One success. With one success, I'll give you two things. Okay. One their relationship and trust in Miles has been completely subverted and corrupted. The second thing about it is that any blood bonds they have are inverted. So rather than being willing to go through anything to protect Miles, these ghouls feel the opposite. They will go through you to kill him. Two quick questions. I don't know if I have the answers to this. One, to my knowledge, Eden is not bloodbound to Miles. That is your knowledge, correct? That is my knowledge. Yep. And not to shoot myself in the foot, is this all blood bonds to Miles? Or is this just currently affecting his ghouls, it seems like? This is currently affecting his ghouls. Okay. I only ask because I am bloodbound to Miles. Yep. Okay. Um Can we maybe Hmm I uh and Neil sort of gets a little lost in thought. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh, don't, don't, don't mind me, everybody. And Neil just kind of turns and starts rummaging through Miles' pockets. And just seems to, like, check out for a second. Okay, oh. when you reach for Miles' pockets, guns are trained on you. Uh, I'm not getting a... It's... We're... Just... Ignore me. Johnny step... Uh, interposes himself between Neil and, uh, Miles... And the crowd? As does when. Nobody do anything stupid. She looks at... Do these ghouls have names? I assume they have names. They were never really, like, introducing themselves to you guys or anything like that. These are Miles' employees. They come in, they do not fraternize with Miles' guests and friends. They're but they, very... were, they were rolling schools before that, right? Yes. Were they ever around? Did they ever... They never interacted as people. Unfortunately, uh, these guys have been ghouled. A long time. Faceless goons their whole lives. And if they were not engaging in really odd behavior right now, you guys probably wouldn't even have noticed them. That's just... Yeah, that's fair. Life among vampires. Is there any one of them that seems to look like he's taking point in doing the talking? They're, they seem to be following Eden. Guys, how long... Have you been working for Rollins and then for Miles? 60. So they start throwing off, but it's usually multiple decades. What would have happened if Miles hadn't stepped in to keep you guys sustained when Rollins was killed? That's kind of a bullshit question. What would have happened if Miles didn't kill Rollins? What would have happened if Rollins kept going completely bug nuts crazy and decided you were against him? He would never do that. Well, agree to disagree on that point. Then agree to disagree. When their perceptions are being altered, you can't no, have they're a not. Disco okay. It's more clear than ever. I know. I know. Uh, what I'm looking for, by the way, in Miles's pockets is offhand. Miles is like, "Hey, the serpent people gave me a fucking amulet. Is it bad?" And while Neil does not have, let's say, a Tremere's perception perception of things, I believe my response was, "Yes, obviously." So I'm looking for any sort of fucking amulet or something in Miles' pockets. Well, I think he showed it to you. He did. I'm looking for it. I just have so many pockets. Miles, do you have it on you? I do. You find it. Neil comes out of 
Miles is like searching Miles, uh, holds up an amulet, puts it on a floor, and is like, "Hey Johnny, can you break? Did you just break this for me?" Johnny kind of looks down at the amulet with like just kind of like disdain of like, I, "You really want to break something in the middle of something and just kind of casually yes, move just, away from it?" Oh, they kind of they. All right, we roll initiative. Oh. <sighs> Uh, there's six of them. They're going full auto. Goons are going on 12. What you got? 24? I'm going on a 7. I'm going on a 9! So Johnny is going to, um, with an indignant snarl on his face, step forward amidst these ghouls and is just going to, like, take a whirlwind step forward, swinging his arms and bashing these guys amongst their heads, and he is going to split his action into five separate strikes, um, leaving just a single one of them standing. Johnny unleashes a hurricane, and go ahead and give me five <laughs> rolls. Um, because his attack is 15 dice, that means I'll have three dice for each guy. Uh, four successes on the first one. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, one success on the next one. <laughs> Four successes on the next one. <laughs> one success on the next one. Four more successes. <laughs> oh my god! He rolled three dice for each of those. <laughs> uh, I'll spend a single point of uh, Neil's blood for uh, potence. Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm no longer Potence Eight. Okay, so you have a mere five automatic successes on all of these. <laughs> and two more successes on the three dice. So eights two, and tens. Eights and tens. Okay, they so two. Two of them will take six bashing damage. Three of them will take eight bashing damage, which knocks them unconscious and wraps one into lethal. So, Johnny leaps forward with a flurry of blows that drops five out of the six. Two of them are still conscious but on the ground. The rest of them are laid out cold. One is standing. They will drop their weapon. Good move. Spent a willpower on this. Neil, shoot you in the fucking head. Is it Eden? Yes, it is. She has one success to hit you. I don't get the body armor on this, right? Correct. Shot me in the head. I rolled two tens, but I do not have any sort of spec, so I will soak two damage. You will merely take three lethal to the head as a bullet is fired straight into your eye socket and your head snaps back. That's my first injury of the night. I assume I gotta make a frenzy. That's correct. Your self-control is capped at your blood pool. Mm, I'm going to spend a willpower on this. I do not want to frenzy on Eden right now. With one, 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 seven, and the willpower, I have one success. You do not frenzy. <laughs> Ow! Fuck! Eden looks fucking shocked that she did that, but <laughs> when it's on you. If there's a question whether you need a frenzy chop, you need a frenzy chop, right? Indeed. Someone just shot my emotional support milk. Roll it. I also do not want to... Kill the little girl. Kill yeah. the baby. <sighs> One success. Willpower well spent. <sighs> Wynn looks super fucking close to just shoving people out of the way and tearing Eden to shreds. But something in her holds back her basest instincts and she instead drags Neil can she grab the amulet too? Yeah, the amulet's being held pretty out in the open for you guys. She will drag Neil out of the line of fire grab the amulet along the way and hands shaking for maybe the first time in a very long time she just kind of holds, she pulls her shirt off and holds pressure on Neil's wound. She's wearing multiple shirts. It's New England and she's a gangrel. It's also actually really sweet because like Neil's vampire is not bleeding actively, but that mm -hmm. like in, the immediate instinct. Yeah, yeah. I, have to, I have to keep Absolutely. him safe. And I am panicking because he's been hurt. Wynn takes steps to protect Neil. 
Neil, what do you do? It's it's not it's not their fault. To somebody probably probably the set ice, but somebody somebody got inside them. I know. No, I mean not physically inside them, but like is is. Co- Neil, Neil, I'm not even making a joke about what you just said. Corrupting okay? the bonds. I I get it. Okay. I get it, but so, you're so. The, you're the guy who sees stuff, and you just got shot in the fucking head in the it's, eye. I I know. I I it's not her fault. Can you? Rip Neil this also apart? looks like pissed. He he look he's not okay. Yeah. With what happened. Um, also had to, like, keep the beast down, but is, seems to be, like, dealing with it by just throwing his brain directly into puzzle mode. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Can you figure out a way to destroy this thing? I mean, if we just snap it, I, I don't know anything else than that. Like I told Miles before, I don't know how to, once magic is in play, it's probably in play, but I, I don't know. It's, it's at least not good to have. Uh, do, do you know some way to, like, annul magic? Are we out of no. rounds? No, that's not a thing I know how to do. Um, no. And, no, we're not, I don't think. So, it is still Neil's go. Yeah. But I can at least buy us time to think about it. And how far did you pull? Like, can we still see Johnny through the door? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so. she, she didn't take him far. Like, if they were in the doorway, okay. she basically just took him and pulled him to the side of the door. Like, realistically, they could probably shoot through the wall. All right. So I, I just, I need to buy us time to think. And I'm going to vanish from the mind's eye, the five of us. Go for it. Because I also don't want to leave, like, Miles' body when they fucking hate right. him just standing right there. I have six successes on a Vanish from the Mind's Eye to hit all of us plus them, which... Actually, it, uh, it depends. What is their... Um, what is their wits plus alertness? Six. Okay, so, uh, yes, I have that many. I have, uh, what did I say, six successes? Mm-hmm. With more than three, we disappear completely, and if we score more than the observers willpower rating uh they forget that we were here in the first place you have okay so everybody in the room forgets that we were ever here as all of us disappear hold on nobody move we just need to think and we'll disappear all of us so miles's body britta's body when johnny and neil all vanish so thoroughly they forget we existed if i act is that gonna break it for the rest of you no it'll just break it for you okay um, but right now, like, you would probably see, okay, correct me if I'm wrong, Lex, but you would probably see that, like, you are mid fist fight with someone and then a look in their face like they forgot they were even there fighting you. Yep. Like, they just blank out as if, like, they're not even aware they're in a fight. <laughs> Round two. Johnny. Johnny, seeing that they are unawares of him, will take a step further in and he is going to perform two grapples. He is going to snatch the last goon who dropped his gun by the lapels, and he is going to grab Eden by the hand holding the gun. And he is intending to just lift her up off her feet with the gun pointed straight up, with his hands just over top of her hand. Go for it. Remember, you do get the dice bonus for surprising them. Which is how many dice? Uh, You roll Roll stealth. Stealth. It is not contested because you are invisible. So you just roll your dex plus stealth. And then every success will give you an extra die. Two successes. Lex, am I close enough to actually be able to, to just take a free step to be behind them? Yeah. All right. So uh, to grab the ghoul. Four successes to, gra- uh, to grapple the ghoul. Grappled. Three successes to grapple Eden. Grappled. Uh, with Johnny's last action, uh, he will feed from the ghoul. How much are you taking? You can take up to three with an action. I am taking three. Okay. So Johnny is standing there, feeding from the ghoul, and hoisting Eden up by the hand holding the gun, letting her dangle. Uh, The ghoul has, like, no hope of breaking her grapple, so I'm just going to kind of not worry about that. All right, we cut to win. Is there, like, a pendant on this? Amulet. There's a blue glazed earthenware amulet. Desperate for ideas at this point. Wynn just kind of takes what, if there's a center pendant on it or a piece that looks like it's supposed to be the focal point. Yep. She just snaps it. Okay. When that happens, the ghouls in Eden seem overwhelmed with emotional exhaustion and just collapse. Wynn kind of pauses for a minute, just kind of holding the two halves and listening. And then she kind of shoves the halves in different pockets 
and helps Neil toward the car. Neil shakes his head. Where, where are you going? Where are we going? Uh, we're not going to stay here. Why not? There's no better to be right now. Who knows who they called before we got here, man? And we can find out. We'll find out, but we don't have time to go anywhere. And you know, what? we're still in a crisis mode. We, we have to pick a place, and I, I feel like that place has to be here. Okay. And she will instead help him. She will peek in the doorway to see what the situation is. You see Johnny surrounded by a bunch of tired people. Yeah. Johnny, do, are they under control enough to bring them in? Johnny takes another three points of blood. Understood. From the same guy? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. I need a conscience check. One success. You don't feel great about that. This guy's probably not going to make it. Even a ghoul? Yeah. Yeah, you, you uh, took six pints of blood out of his body. Doesn't he have eight? <laughs> well. <laughs> He's dying. Yeah. 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 Are we out of rounds, Lex? You are out of rounds. As when and Neil step back inside, seeing Johnny feed at all on, on this, it's okay. I mean, well, it's not okay, but th- this is not their fault. The Setites got to them. Johnny drops them. Um, I don't know what to do about it. Uh, hopefully that works with the with the pendant when you broke it. Yeah. It's broken. I, I broke it. It was <sighs> clay. Okay. Now we got to get back to fucking figuring out. <sighs> Eden, how are you feeling? Are you, are you you? Are you alive? Uh, I don't feel good. I I bet I I bet you don't. Yeah. Uh, hey, quick question. And I, I know you don't feel well. How do you feel about Miles right now? What? Or I any of us? I don't understand that. Qu- Fine. Okay. Neil takes like a huge audible breath of relief. Okay, I think it fixed it. Um. Okay, so now we got to figure out. What do we do with them? We gotta get them back on their feet. Eden, we gotta put out your cigarette and go to bed. Well, hold on. She shouldn't be alone right now either. Just you curl up on the couch, maybe. Or that's fine. I looks, mostly put the cigarette out. She looks pretty surprised that she has a cigarette. Don't really put it out. Just give it to Johnny. She just Johnny's still holding her in the air. By the way, <laughs> yeah, but with the, in the other hand, she's <laughs> like, yeah. he uh, have her having dropped the the ghoul. He takes. Takes the cigarette from her oh, and starts smoking it. She's like a totally incompetent smoker. She, like the the cigarette butt's like slick, and <laughs> she clearly held in her mouth the wrong way. And like with the filter on the outside. No, I think Eric understands what I mean. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. It's Erica does uh, the, it, but... Just just in case the audience can't yeah. see my look of utter disgust. It's pretty intense. <laughs> um. Okay. Okay. Let's then let's get them in. Neil, go sit on the couch with Eden. Get the, okay. I'll... He he sets Eden down on her feet, and kind of gives a an upset look at the ghoul. I probably took way too much blood from him. Um, does Miles have? Does, are there emerg- Does Miles have emergency supplies like med kits, blood transfusion kits? Uh, Johnny looks at one of the ghouls who's not unconscious, but just like incapped on the ground. Where's where are the blood stores? There's supplies in the house across the street, but not blood. I I got it. And Wynn looks deeply upset. How much is gonna keep him from dying? I, I don't know. I'm not. I don't have any medical training. We probably if he's got a chance to, we probably need like an actual doctor in here. Um, but it would be really fucked up to keep a doctor in here, and I don't know Miles's Rolodex for that kind of thing. Johnny, to you? For a doctor? Yes. Not really. Um, okay. All right. P- problem get, one. Get them in. Let's lock the door. Problem two, getting Miles and, and Britta back on their feet. Now. Because the city is without a prince. And that is really, really bad right now. Specifically right now. Specifically because... Neil. Neil. We're wait. not going to start discussing what to do until we've done the first things on the list. Let's get you, everybody inside. You want me sitting on the couch, I'll I'll make the list. But when I was getting in the car with Johnny while you were out, I saw it. Like Capital S saw it. The Sabbat are coming. Now. This is a bad time for the city to be without a prince, so we gotta figure out how to I, get him on his feet. Johnny I have shuts ideas. Johnny shuts the door and locks it. Path of Night is a vampire the masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. Britta Ashcroft the Toreador was played by Rebecca Segelfest. 
Johnny Saxon the Bruja was played by Garrett Gabby. Miles Davenport the Venture was played by Tim Davis. Neil Foster the Malkavian was played by Rob Muirhead. Wynn Cabot the Gangrel was played by Erica Webb. Your storyteller was Lex Lopez. Recording by Rebecca Stagelfest. This episode edited by Rob Muirhead. The music used in this episode was composed for Path of Night by Brian Metolius. Find him online at brianmetolius.com. Path of Night uses the 20th anniversary edition of Vampire the Masquerade with a few limited house rules. Vampire the Masquerade and the World of Darkness are owned by Paradox Interactive. Make sure to subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. We can be found on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Path of Night. You can help support the show on coffee.com slash Path of Night. Find us on twitter.com slash Path of Night Pod, on facebook.com slash Path of Night Podcasts, or email us at Path of Night Podcasts at gmail.com. See you next time, Kindred. <laughs> Remembering what all of them are at this point. So you'll have to describe your eerie presence, your co- uh, your cobra eyes, your sorry, cobra face, seagull. seagull eyes. Mm-hmm. Your you have scales on the sides. Yep. I think that's she's got a hood on, so it's <laughs> can't see the scales. So less much. scary, <laughs> less weird. <laughs> I just love the fact that Kabir is the one crazy motherfucker <laughs> who sees this and is like, yeah, <laughs> I'm fucking rock hard right now. Let's go. It's so funny because we've seen kind of like a series of a few guys be like, yeah, win. And now seeing win interact with regular yeah, ass with, mortals. With people. <laughs> now I'm just imagining being a college kid, like drunkenly making out with some hot chick in New Haven and looking up to see this fucking like evil looking vagrant being like, you want to know something? We're good, good to go. <laughs> and being like, what? girl, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> the mood, it's dead. <laughs> but seriously, uh, if you could describe your, your presence, we haven't got that one in a while. So I don't know that Wynn <coughs> has described her eerie presence since maybe like episode two or mm-hmm. three. Um... I know all the good fucking spots. <laughs> For real. <laughs> this a <the> first date? Fucking <laughs> win. You want Bailey's out of the boat? <laughs> <laughs> Lex, is this pretty much how you thought it was going to go? If we're going to be totally honest, yes. <laughs> has it exceeded your expectations? <laughs> it has. You're doing great. Thanks. Thanks, this, buddy. This is when in the city as opposed to hunting in the woods is <laughs> pretty much... This is why Wynn has people like Miles and Britta. Hi. I'm old Wynn. <laughs> Guys, for real, is there anything to say? <laughs>